All right, welcome back. This is another video in our Brick Breaker or uh, Breakout style game. We are making in Construct 3 or Construct 2. And we are coding some gameplay this time. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to add an event. Sprite uh, is going to be the blue block. And I want to say on, whoops, on collision. Actually, nope. Let's go back. Let's choose the ball. I want the ball to be on collision with another object. So let's choose that. And I want that object to be the blue block. There we go. So when our ball comes into contact with the blue block, I want the blue block. Let's add an action. Sprite block blue. I'm going to type in destroy, if I can spell it right, destroy. So let's play that. And ready and go. Let's see if we can get it to collide with our blue block over there. Not the best angle. And there it is. It collided and it destroyed the object. Now it's no longer on screen for it to interact with. That is what we want. And if you remember, we created a particles object. So let's add an action and say system create object. Let's choose that object and we want the particles. Uh, let's uh, layer, just uh, type in a quotation mark and let's select game. So make sure your layer, the exact name and spelling of the layer is in between quotation marks. And let's set the X to our block object. So block blue dot X is going to be our X value. And for the Y, we're going to say block blue dot Y. So wherever that block is, wherever its X and Y origin is, whenever it is destroyed, it is going to play the particles in that spot. So let's try that out. And here we go. Boom, and that is exactly what I want. That looks great. We don't have this set up completely yet, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. Let's add another action. Go to system and type in subtract from. We wanna subtract one from our block total. This is gonna tell us how many blocks are on screen. I'm going to right click, add a group. I'm gonna call this game play. I'm gonna drag this into our gameplay group. Go to add event. I want to check if my sprite uh, ball is overlapping another object. That object is going to be death. And if it's overlapping, which means over here on the layout, if it falls off the screen this way, there's no wall to it for it to bounce off of. So it's going to overlap this. And when it does, we are going to set up the game over logic. So we want to immediately destroy our ball. And I want to add another action sprite, pick our player's paddle, and I want to set enabled to disabled. I also want to, let's add an action, make text loser. Uh, set visibility to visible. So now, when the ball goes off the screen, it will disable the player controls, it will destroy our ball object, and it will flash, or not flash, but it'll show loser on screen. And then I am going to add action, system, wait. We're going to wait for, let's say, three seconds. That way you have to stare at the word loser for three seconds and hurt your feelings. We're going to add an action system set the value of game over to true, which is one. Also, after three seconds, we want to make sure that we take care of this text, uh, the, our loser text. So set visible to invisible. And I'll slide that up there. So destroy the ball, disable the paddle, show the loser text, wait three seconds. Uh, make the loser text invisible and set our game over variable to true because our game is now over. I am going to 
right click, add a group, say game over. Slide that in there, game over, let's save. Pretty easy stuff, nothing uh, too complicated, expand all. Uh, there's a, a, it looks like a lot going on, but it's really just you're telling the computer or whatever you're playing on exactly what to do each step of the way. So I'm going to stop this here. We're going to pick up in the next video and code some more game logic.